Welcome back to The Griot with Mark Lamont Hill. There is a bill on the books in Georgia that could disenfranchise descendants of enslaved people on Sapelo Island. Sapelo is a barrier island on the Georgia coast that is only accessible by boat or other watercraft. It is known to be Gullah Geechee territory. Earlier this month, the Georgia Assembly quietly passed a bill to change the rules of the Sapelo Island Heritage Society. Now, this board votes on issues that routinely affect the community, and the new bill ultimately changes the makeup of the board, and it passed without any input from residents. Joining me now is Dr. Jessica Berry. She's a Gullah Geechee language expert, a speech language pathologist, and an educational consultant. Uh, welcome to the GRIO. Uh, help me understand, what, what's that issue here with this new rule? Uh, what's at issue is the preservation of Gullah Geechee people's land, heritage, culture, and language. Um, when you have other people that sort of encroach on and have the opportunity to take away spaces that Gullah Geechee people occupy, you de facto erase um, a U.S. national treasure, which is the Gullah Geechee people culture, language, and history. That's, and for people who don't know, Gullah Geechee history, Gullah Geechee community, who are they? So the Gullah Geechee people are descendants of enslaved Africans that were brought here during the transatlantic slave trade and also indigenous peoples. Um, we uh, have vestiges and have created a language called the Gullah Geechee language, um, which is a Creole language that is a blend of many African languages with English that still exists today along the coast from North Carolina all the way down to Florida, primarily spoken by African-American people who are descendants of enslaved Africans. And so Gullah Geechee represents not just the language, but also the culture, which is our sweet grass baskets, our eating off of the land, our culture, our food, our music, our religion, the way that we live. And so Gullah Geechee is uh, to be celebrated, honored, and treasured in uh, like Sapelo Island and St. Helena Island, Johns Island, Wadmala Islands. All of the sea islands across the coast um, are where Gullah Geechee people reside. And we've seen, just like Owen Sapelo, um, where developers come in to take historic Gullah Geechee property, which indeed draws out and, and pushes away the Gullah Geechee people. And so that's what's happening here in many ways, right? You have a community that has been self-sustaining, that has been fertile, it has been rich, it has been beautiful, and suddenly it's threatened by legislation, by uh, economic concerns of the powerful. And usually the board, uh, in my understanding, at least in most places, the boards come around and they get input from residents. They get input from the people who are stakeholders. But this time around, the board just made a decision without any input from residents, without any input from descendants. How? Why? You know, this is a pattern. It's uh, because people don't understand who we are and what we bring to the table. The enslaved Africans that were brought here were brought for their knowledge of working the land. Um, they were brought not because they wanted to be, not because they were considered. And so we see the same patterns happening here on Sapelo Island where our thoughts, our opinions, our genius that we bring to these spaces, the hands that were used to cultivate this land and to create economic growth aren't being honored in how this space is being preserved for those indigenous people. Um, and it's really hard to watch and to see our people be um, disenfranchised in this way and being pushed out of their homes because this is what's happening across the corridor. Um, we see heirs property issues where many of uh, Gullah Geechee people live on property that is family. Um, and so developers come in and to their advantage, they take advantage of the heirs properties laws that allow them to take up a lot of Gullah Geechee land um, and displace Gullah Geechee people. And so it's unfortunate, and it's one of those things that we have to bring awareness to about who Gullah Geechee people are and why it's important for us to have conversations about preserving our culture, our language, and our heritage. It's the closest to Africa that we can get here in the U.S., and it's worth fighting for. That's, that's an important point you just made. You know, Geechee communities, Gullah Geechee communities are literally the closest we're going to get to Africa in so many ways in terms of direct linkages culturally, spiritually, linguistically, all of those things. And you would think then that the board would be comprised, at least partially, if not all the way, by Geechee residents. Are there any Geechee residents on the board? 
according to the article, there there probably are two or three on the board. Um, I would encourage them to consider going back out to the community, talking to the residents, um, and exploring their thoughts and their opinions about what should happen on this board and with their land. It's their land. They've cultivated it for years. It's not very accessible, and it's something really special. What's on the land? You and talk about it being cultivated. You talk about the land being cultivated. What's on this land? Because people don't go to unfertile land. They don't go and try to, you know, rip off. Uh, you know, colonizers are great. They take the best stuff. They jack the best material. What's there? I mean, we're right on the water. And so it is prime land for farming, for agriculture, for us to plant the things that we have lived off of for years. Okra, collard greens, beans, all of those things. Gullah Geechee people are agricultural by nature. And so we still do those things. And not only the things that we cultivate, but this land is on the water. And let's just, if we talk about what the climate is, they want to put the resorts there for people to come and enjoy these island spaces, just like they've done on Hilton Head Island and several other islands. And so it is the real estate uh, potential in which they're after, but the real estate potential really diminishes the agricultural and historical value of the Gullah Geechee people um, Absolutely. with these real Absolutely. estate. There's nothing, there's nothing about uh, unchecked capitalism that's good for the environment, that's good for communities, that's good for, you know, preserving culture. They're trying to displace y'all and replace you with, like you said, resorts and other places to make money. And yeah, we could probably grow collard greens somewhere else. We could probably, you know, get some, some, some fresh okra in another place. But at the end of the day, we're displacing an entire community and an entire culture that's so central to how we understand ourselves as black people and frankly, how this nation understands itself. What can we do to stop it, and not just now, but in the future? How do we stop these things from happening? Uh, we have to have conversations and we have to get our communities involved to understand the value of what we have. When we don't understand what we have, it's easy for us to sort of give it away, if you will. I think it's important for us to connect with agencies that are already doing the work to educate us about the heirs' properties laws. We need to have conversations, generational conversations about the properties that we own, put things in trust, put things in wills and writing so that we know where our property and our land and things like that go when elders in our family and our communities pass away. We have to do the work. And so um, agencies like the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission, Gullah Geechee Nation are all doing the work, have websites that are readily available for Gullah Geechee people and others to lock in um, to provide the financial resources, the legal resources for Gullah Gullah Geechee people to hold on to and to preserve their land and their property, which is of value because it holds the heart of who we are in our families, in our language, and in our culture. Mm. Everybody, this is not just a Gullah Geechee fight. This is a fight for all black folk and, frankly, anybody who cares about peace and love and justice. Dr. Barry, I want to thank you for your insights. And I want to tell everybody to check out your book. It's called The Little Gullah Geechee Book, A Guide for the Kumya. It's available right now.